Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. Friends, as uh, Tom comes to offer your gifts to God, let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we give you thanks for the opportunity this day to share in the abundance that you have given to us. We thank you, O Holy God, that we can contribute to feeding the hungry and housing the homeless and clothing the naked in our community and around the world through our connectional church. We ask your blessing upon these gifts. Mm. May they be combined with others and multiplied to fulfill your mission, to bring your kingdom to earth, to transform the world. This is our prayer this day, offered in the name of the risen Christ and all God's people said, Amen. Thank you, Tom. So friends, what do you think we should maybe sing some more? I like that idea. So today is uh, Mamma Mia Sunday, so there's a whole lot of singing and dancing uh, about to just explode into this worship space. So uh, what do you say we kick it off right? Let's stand and sing, Good, Good Father, and You Say.
thank you, Sparrows. Friends in the house, you may have a seat, make yourselves comfortable. Uh, it's movie day here at Trinity Church in Chesterfield. It's the third Sunday in July in our movie today that we'll be building message around for, uh, for us as a community of faith is Mamma Mia. Uh, those of you here in the sanctuary, grab yourself some popcorn if you'd like. There's also candy and water. Uh, just kind of make yourselves at home because we're getting ready to go to the movies. Welcome to our online virtual community as well. We're glad that you are with us on this beautiful Sunday morning. It's a little rainy here in our part of the world, and that's a wonderful in the middle of July. So um, as we get started this morning, we've got a couple of scriptures we want to read for you, and, uh, and then we'll get some, uh, see some of the movie Mamma Mia as we extract some. First, uh, let us pray. Holy God, pour your spirit upon us today. Guide us and lead us, open our hearts and our minds, open our ears and our eyes to that which you would have us experience. We've come today expecting to encounter you in ways that might be different, not the norm on a Sunday morning. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless us with your presence. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. So our first scripture this morning is an Old Testament passage. It comes from the book of Ruth. Uh, which is considered to be part of the, uh, the wisdom literature, even though it's in the historical uh, setting, the chronolo chronological setting uh, of the Old Testament. It's from the first chapter, verses 16 and 17. Ruth said to Naomi, her mother-in-law, Do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people. And your God, my God, where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus and so to me, and more as well, if even death parts me from you. And then from the New Testament, late in the book of Acts, this is um, part of Paul's journeys, and it's being told, parts of it are told in, uh, in the first person voice. Uh, Luke is said to be the writer of uh, the book of Acts and is identified as such at the beginning of the book. And uh, there are parts of the story in which uh, it would appear that Luke was traveling with Paul on his missionary journeys, and this is one of them. From chapter 27, beginning with verse 9, much time had been lost and the voyage was now dangerous since the day of reconciliation had already passed, Paul warned them, Men, I see that our voyage will suffer damage and great loss, not only for the cargo and ship, but also for our lives. But the centurion was persuaded more by the ship's pilot and captain than by Paul's advice. And in verse 18, verse 20, excuse me, now when neither the sun nor the moon appeared for many days, and the raging storm continued to pound us, all hope of our being saved from this peril faded. For a long time no one had eaten. Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have complied with my instructions not to sail from Crete. Then we would have avoided this damage and loss. Now I urge you to be encouraged. Not one of your lives will be lost, though we will lose the ship. Last night an angel from the God to whom I belong and whom I worship stood beside me. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. Indeed, God has also graciously given you everyone sailing with you. Be encouraged, men, Paul said. I have faith in God that it will be exactly as God told me. Friends, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Paul and his um, crew were sailing around the Greek islands. They were en route to uh, Rome, uh, where Paul was to appear before Caesar. Mamma Mia is set on the Greek islands. And uh, the movie is, uh, is a, a story about uh, dreams. It's a story about dreams, 
of dreams that were uh, uh, hoped for and longed for, dreams that uh, didn't materialize, dreams that were achieved and accomplished, dreams that in retrospect uh, folks were glad they didn't play out the way they had originally hoped. It's a story of dreams and it's the, the setting or the context is a young woman named Sophia who's in her early 20s and her mother Donna live on this Greek island and uh, Donna runs an inn on the island and Sophia helps her and Sophia has a dream and her dream is that on her impending wedding day her father will give her away in marriage. There's just one problem. She doesn't know who her father is and neither does her mother. And the story revolves around Sophia's longing to have this dream fulfilled of her father giving her way in marriage that she sends in secret three invitations to the three men named in her mother's journal to come and be present at the wedding. And that's the context in the setting for this uh, story. Now, I think we all have uh, dreams that we can identify with uh, the, the basic notion of this movie, this story, that we all have dreams that uh, we have longed for throughout our lifetime. Uh, our dreams change as we get older. Uh, I was thinking this morning about uh, when in conversation with the kids, like, so Parker, do you know what you want to be when you grow up? An artist or a singer. Wonderful. Wonderful. I wanted to be a baseball player. That dream didn't quite work out. But when I was your age, that's all I wanted to do was play baseball. Right? And so most of the folks in this room probably had dreams like that too when they were young, things that they wanted to be when they grew up. And some of them it worked out. And sometimes it doesn't because we find other things that we like even better. And so the story of Mamma Mia is about dreams and how they change over time and what those experiences are. And um, there's some lessons that we can learn from this movie, I think, for us today as a church. So the first lesson, the first lesson we can learn is to dream big, to dream big. And so let's watch the first clip. Hi. Hi. Um, I think I should explain to Donna that I come in peace. Oh no, really? You should wait. You should wait until she's a few drinks here first. Really. Good idea. Good idea. Um, what you drew on the boat. This is good. This is really good. Why don't you pursue this? You have a real talent here. I have enough to do here. Is that really your dream? Running the villa with Donna? It's, you just can't do it by yourself. Do you know, I drew this whole place up on the back of a menu one night. I always dreamt I'd come back here. Well, what kept you? What's your mother said about me? She never mentioned you. Sophie, what am I doing here? There's some air in here. Ugh. Ah. Somebody up there has got it in for me. Oh. I bet it's my mother. Oh, and wasn't she a ray of sunshine? I'm gonna go get him. Out of here. You go in there, guns loaded. There's gonna be questions. Help me out of these boots. Come on then. All that freaking yoga's made my feet bigger. Yeah, now listen, listen. What we're gonna do is we'll get them plastered tonight, uh -huh. and then tomorrow, Tanya and I oh, will take them fishing. <clears throat> Um, remember, you chose this movie. I didn't, okay? <laughs> oh, goodness. So that clip showed Sophie, the young woman who's about to get married, and Sam. Sam was one of uh, the, the men that she invited to come to the island uh, as possibly her father. 
Sophie had resigned herself to uh, her life would be staying on the island and um, doing what her mother needed to help uh, run that inn. And Sam had long ago given up the dream of living on the island with Donna. And so the question I've been wondering about a little bit this week uh, in the context of this story is, uh, have we as Jesus followers given up on the big dream? Are we like Sophie, content to just continue doing what we've, uh, what we've done, what we've always done, to content to do what we do as a church? Church dreams, church wants, are often about self-preservation. How do we sustain ourselves? How do we keep ourselves going? How do we have enough money and have enough people to continue doing what we do? Rebecca Simon Peter is a United Methodist pastor out in, um, in uh, Wyoming and uh, a church consultant and, and coach. And she says that we need to learn to dream like Jesus. And she's written a book by that title, Dream Like Jesus. Jesus' dream, his vision, his purpose was what drove him day to day in his ministry. It was big. It fueled his teaching, and it empowered his miracles. Rebecca asked, what is Jesus' dream? Listen to these words, because I think you'll recognize this. Jesus' dream is that the beautiful, creative, abundant, gracious, life-giving, blessed intentions of God would be as fully realized on earth as they already are in heaven that heaven would be reflected here on earth, that we as Jesus' followers would fully embody God's will in all of our dealings and all of our doings. Jesus' purpose, Jesus' vision, his dream is that God's will will be done here on earth like it is in heaven. It's what he teaches us to pray when he offers the model prayer. Rebecca goes on to say that this means a few things. First off, the well-being of the earth is essential to Jesus' own dream. God's plan of salvation doesn't take place in the afterlife. God's plan of salvation takes place and is lived out here on earth, which means creation care is critically important to living the Jesus dream. Second, it means that we as Jesus' followers are called to be active participants. It's not something that Jesus is doing devoid of us or away from us. In order for it to, to manifest itself, we have to participate. And third, it means that we have to let the dream move us to new actions, new conversation, and new ways of being. And that comes by tapping into and being aware of this deep, Spirit of God that dwells within each one of us. Yeah. Dreaming big, dreaming like Jesus. A second lesson we can learn from uh, Mamma Mia is uh, we should dance more. We should dance more. Paul was, um, St. Paul was a big dreamer. Um, you know Paul's story. He was Saul of Tarsus. He was a church persecutor who uh, Jesus gave a rebirth experience to, saw the light, and became the, the uh, epitome of church planner, traveling all over Asia, planting new churches in Gentile, non-Jewish communities. Paul dreamed big. He dreamed of covering the gospel all over Asia and into Europe. He wanted to go to Spain. He wanted to carry the gospel up into the northern parts of Europe. That was his dream. And in his first letter, of the many letters that he wrote that are part of our canon, in his first letter he wrote, uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, that we should rejoice always, pray without ceasing, for this is God's will for us in Jesus Christ. And he said, don't suppress the spirit. Don't brush off spirit-inspired messages. 
We have a dream and we might expect the unexpected, but I would encourage us not to just expect the unexpected to happen, but to embrace the unexpected. That even if we have a dream and a vision of what we are doing or how, where we are going as a church and as individuals within the church, that God may act on us at times when we don't expect it in ways that we haven't anticipated to move us and to call us and to guide us into new things. Think about Jesus and uh, his dinner parties, right? Jesus loved to have a good time. He loved to go into other people's homes and have dinner with them and tell them stories and interact with them and experience them. I imagine that Jesus probably um, danced a little bit too at these parties in a tradition that, or in a dance that was uh, in keeping with his culture and his tradition. So the second thing is when in doubt, dance. And here's the second clip.
Dance more. Don't suppress the spirit. Be spontaneous. And the third thing that we can extract from this, and of course, when we were sitting there watching that, I'm thinking, okay, the next clip that's coming up, what's at the beginning of it that I'm not expecting us to see today? <laughs> Goodness. Yeah, so... Um, I mean, this, this just, I mean, this is perfect, right? So the third thing that we can learn from this movie is pursue the dream with others. Why? Because it's more fun, right? It's more fun. And it's biblical. Think about Ruth and Naomi, the adventure that they took. Naomi was going home because her dreams in life had been completely shattered. She'd lost her husband. She'd lost both of her sons. She didn't have any grandchildren. This was her life that she had expected and anticipated. And it all came crashing down. But Ruth, one of her daughters, stuck with her and chose to go with her back to Bethlehem, to Judah, and promised that I will be with you and I will go with you, I will live with you, I will take care of you into my old age. I will worship your God. I will do this with you so that we can together start a new life. Pursue the dream with others. Not only is it more fun, but it's biblical. Not only Naomi and Ruth, but think of Jesus and the Twelve Apostles, right? The name of a great music group, Jesus and the Twelve Apostles. It would have been a big band group, lots of horns, I imagine. What do you think? Yeah. Jesus chose twelve folks to travel with him. And when he began to empower them to do the work of ministry, he sent them out in what? In pairs, right? And after the first group went out and came back and they were successful healing and teaching and preaching in his name, he then turned around and sent out 72 more in 36 pairs, always working together, expanding the team, expanding the reach, but having fun while they do it because working together, working with others, is the best way to pursue the dream. All right, here we go. Welcome to <laughs> Sophie and Sky and to all your friends who have gathered together this evening. And welcome especially to Donna, who represents your family. We are all here together in this glory. And welcome to, to Sophie's dad. I have to tell you, he is here. I know, I invited him. You couldn't. I don't know which one it is. Oh my God! That's why they're all here. I'm sorry, sorry. I just please, please, please forgive me. Please forgive me. Please. I don't know. Can you forgive me? What? I don't care if you slept with hundreds of men. <laughs> You're my mom, and I love you so much. <laughs> oh, so. Well, I haven't slept with hundreds of men. Um, am I getting this right? Sophie may be mine, but she may be Bill's or Harry's? Yeah, yes, that's right. And don't get all self-righteous with me, because you have no one but yourself to blame. Yeah, if you hadn't just dumped my mother and gone off and married somebody else. Hey, hey, wait a minute. I had to go home. I was engaged, but I told Lorraine I couldn't marry her, and I came right back. You... you... Why didn't you call me? Because I was crazy enough to think that you would be waiting for me. Only when I arrived, they told me you were off with some other guy. So, Lorraine called me an idiot and married me to prove it. Sorry, can I just, can I just, might I just bust you? Sorry, no, no, that's all right, you don't have to. No, no, I just want to say it's great to, to have even, a, have a third of Sophie. I never thought I'd, I'd get even that much of a child. Donna, you were the first girl I ever loved. But actually, you were the last girl I ever loved. Now, this gives me an excuse <laughs> to come here much more often. We can find out if you want, but I'm with Harry. Being a third of your daddy is great by me. Yeah, me too. 
I'll take a third. Typical, isn't it? You wait 20 years for a dad and then three come along at once. Dearly beloved. You know, I have no clue which one of you is my dad, but I don't mind. Not a no I really want. Sky, let's just not get married yet. <laughs> you never wanted this anyway. I know that. Let's just get off this island and just see the world, okay? Right. I love you. <laughs> Donna, do I take it the wedding is cancelled? I'm not entirely sure what's happening right now. Hang on. Why waste a good wedding? How about it, Sheridan? You're going to need someone to boss around on this island of yours. Are you nuts? I am not a bigamist. Neither am I. I'm a divorced man who's loved you for 21 years. And ever since the day I set foot on this island, I've been trying to tell you how much I love you. Come on, Donna. It's only the rest of your life. I can conceal it. fun when you do it with others. <laughs> Dream big, be spontaneous, dance more, and do it, live out the dream in collaboration with others. <laughs> Jesus' big dream, God's will to be done on earth as in heaven, that guided him in his teaching and in his miracles and in his day-to-day -day walk and his day-to-day -day work was grounded in his Jewish tradition. But he acted on it and built upon that. In Luke chapter 4, we hear of Jesus going home. He's going to his hometown. He's going back to the place where he was raised, where he was taught his tradition, taught the, the stories of Abraham and Moses and David, where he learned the Psalms. And he goes back there and he goes into the synagogue and, and they say that he stood up to read and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is part of the canon. It's part of the faith tradition. Isaiah was one of God's spokespeople who called for people to change their lives, to do it differently, to do a new thing with God. And this is what Jesus read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the prisoners, recovery of sight to the blind, to liberate the oppressed, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Mm. This is what it looks like for God's will to be done on earth as in heaven. The oppressed are set free, the prisoners are released, the blind are healed. And the year of the Jubilee is the year in the season of forgiveness. 
This is what Jesus came to do, and this is what he did. Because he was guided by that big dream of making heaven reality on earth. Not that we get to leave here and go to heaven, but that heaven comes to earth. And we get to play a part in that. If we dream the big dream, if we adopt Jesus' dream and adapt it for our purposes as well. We can't make Jesus' dream come true. We can't make it happen. But we can do our part to contribute to it. Dream big. Dream with other people. And be prepared to be spontaneous. And dance more. Amen? And amen. All right, friends, let's stand and sing. Happy day.
Thank you, sparrows, and thank you, friends, for worshiping here today. Receive this blessing. May joy and nothing less find you on the way. May you be blessed, and may you be a blessing. And may light God's own merciful, healing, forgiving, risen light guide you and countless others all the way home. Go in peace. Amen, amen. and amen. Thank <clears throat> you.